Okay, so let's go through this example. Um, unlike the previous example, we're not dealing with just axial forces in internal forces in these members. So, uh, um, first, first place to start, we are going to need to figure out what the uh, reactions are here. So, we'll just draw ourselves a quick free body diagram here. of the overall structure. And uh, the reaction at F, we'll call that, actually you know what, I'm going to go ahead and I'm crossing out F and I'm going to call that G because I hate having the place, the locations labeled as F because then you're confusing, well, is that F referring to the force or the spot or blah, blah, blah. Anyhow, uh, G. <laughs> Reaction at G is going to be G, Y. Um, it's roller the connection there, so we don't have any X component to that. And we got our E here as well, so we're going to have an E, Y. And we're going to have an EX. And I'm just going to skip the step where I sum the forces in the X direction and just tell you that EX is zero. So we've got EY, we've got GY that we need to solve for. Uh, so uh, the easiest way to do that would be to basically go ahead and take a moment. Uh, so let's take a moment about E. So I'm going to say sum of the moment about E needs to be equal to zero. Okay, so uh, zero is going to be equal to, we got, uh, so again, that'll be a positive moment caused by GY, 4.8 meters times gy, and then it'll be a negative moment caused by the 24, uh, the 2.4 uh, kilonewton force, uh, so minus 3.6 meters. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we can solve for GY, that's going to be equal to 2400 times 3.6 meters, sorry, newtons there, and then divide by 4.8 meters. Meters cancel out, obviously. And we are left with a GY that is equal to 1800, 1 1.8 kilonewtons. All right, sum of the forces in the Y is going to be equal to zero. Zero is going to be equal to 1.8 kilonewtons minus. 2.4 kilonewtons plus EY. So EY, that's going to be 600 newtons. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, and I guess uh, the next thing that we can do is we can go ahead and uh, uh, try to have a try to figure out what our uh, um, uh, what, what the other components of our of our uh, forces here are going to be. So let's have a look at the member ABC. ABE. Uh, to start with, um, so if we if we 
Just take the free body diagram ABE. So we know that it has 600 newtons there. We know that it has that uh, reaction at B. So B is going to have some sort of a uh, reaction in the y direction. Actually, B y. Wait, that's B x and by my bad and then it's also going to have something at a so it is going to have an ax and an ay so uh we're at a point here uh we can't solve this equation what these are on on its own right uh, we've got four unknowns and we've got three equations that we could use to solve for it so eh, we don't know uh, so uh, we're kind of uh, left in the lurch uh, for that so we need uh, we need to solve for a few other things uh, we, we need to kind of uh, include some of these terms in the free body diagrams for our various uh, we need to bring the other basically bring the other members in, into play as well so looking at uh, this diagram here uh, we've also got our a c g so let's draw a free body diagram for there Now we know that if Ay, if some, if if the reaction from Ay is pushing A uh, on this bar this way, we know that the equal and opposite one will be pushing it this way. And same deal for the Ay, and then we've got the reaction at C. Uh, so again, those haven't come up yet, so we'll just call that CX, we'll call that CY, and then we've got this uh, G term here. Um, so the, that one's just, that one's simple enough, doesn't have any other uh, components to it. Okay, so uh, what we do know here is that we can uh, take a moment about the Uh, about point C here, and we can take a moment about point B. So let's, let's do that and see what happens. So uh, just taking a moment about uh, C. Other direction. Positive moment is that direction. So a moment about C equal to zero. So zero is going to be, okay, so this one is a positive moment. Again, that's going to cause kind of rotation this way. So, 1800 newtons times what's the distance between there and there? Uh, okay, so uh, we're going to have to kind of break out the similar triangles here. Uh, so, we know that uh, 2.7. Uh, we, we know that uh, uh, B, 
BCD is mounted halfway up here, uh, so the uh, distance between G and C is going to be halfway between the distance from G and E. So that'll be uh, 2.4 meters. And uh, we have the AY and AX. So uh, AX, assuming that we had initially guessed correctly when we pointed AX, the AX on the other bar in this direction, uh, that'll be a positive moment as well. So plus AX, and it, that'll be time uh, crossed with the vertical displacement from here to here, so 2.7 meters. And then we've got AY. Uh, so AY is uh, also going to be acting positive, and also going to be causing a positive counterclockwise rotation. All right, so AY, and that'll be times, uh, again, this this displacement from here to here. Uh, so that's uh, also uh, 2.4 meters. OK, so uh, we have ourselves. Uh, right now, got one, one, two, two unknowns and one equation going on here. Uh, but if we take a moment about b, uh, then we can solve for the um, we can solve for ax. So taking a moment about b equal to zero. All right, so the terms that would show up there, the 600 doesn't, AY doesn't, BY doesn't, BX doesn't, AX is the only one that does. Uh, so if AX is the only one that does, we know that AX is zero. Is equal to AX times whatever well, times the distance, times the 2.7 meters, obviously. But uh, guess what? Uh, zero t something times zero is zero. Yeah. Yeah. AX is zero. So we've got that. Uh, we've got this. So that term goes away. So let's see here. Uh, now we, have, we can solve for AY uh, using this equation here. Uh, so AY gives us, uh, let's see, so okay, so 1800 newtons times 2.4 meters is equal to minus AY times 2.4 meters. Okay, so that one is fairly simple to solve for. Ay is equal to negative 1800 newtons. So that means that the, I'm just going to redraw the free body diagrams all quickly like with those forces included. So uh, again, based upon the that's negative eighteen hundred based upon the initial uh, direction we'd given here. So that means that this is pointed downwards eighteen hundred, and this here uh, that's a six hundred. And we already know that a uh, 
AX is zero, which also means that BX here, uh, it's the only one acting in the X direction, so the only one left that's acting in the X direction, which means it's zero too. So that is pretty simple to do. So, uh, and then we've got our BX as well. Sorry, BY. So, uh, some of the forces in the Y direction is equal to zero. That means that we have the negative 1800 plus BY plus 600 is equal to zero. So that gives us a BY of 1200. So, yeah, we're, st we're starting to chip away at this thing, right? So uh, we got a we got a by. We know we know bx is zero. Uh, so uh, let's let's just have a look at our bar uh, bcd here. Okay, so we got b, we got c, and we've got uh, d where the things applied. So that is 2400 newtons. We've got by. Uh, so again, uh, the initial orientation that we had decided for by was if a force was being applied upwards on this vertical link here. And that means that conversely, uh, an equal and opposite force is being applied to the horizontal link. And then we've got uh, our C term here, uh, our C terms. So we got CY. And again, we had initially decided when we wanted to find CY that CY would be positive if this bar was being pushed up. So therefore, this bar needs to be pushed down, CY. And same deal with CX. Uh, CX needs to be going the opposite direction. But again, uh, sum of the forces in X is equal to zero is equal to CX. That goes away. Uh, so I'm just going to erase it. So there's our free body diagram for the uh, for this link here. So it's fairly simple to go ahead and solve for what CY is there. Uh, some of the forces in the Y is equal to zero. So we have a negative 2400 minus 1200 minus minus CY is equal to zero. Therefore, CY is equal to negative 3,600 newtons. So the actual free body diagram, 2,400, 1,200, no wait. Other way, 1200 <laughs> and 3600 newtons. Okay, so uh, we've got that bar, and we one of the points that we we're asked to to look at was uh, this point K here. So we're worried about K. Uh, so we've got enough information to, to go ahead and look at that. So uh, K is located 1.5 meters uh, to the right of B. So, okay, I'll draw this out a bit neater. One of these days, I will figure out how to draw a straight line on this dam. Oh, not bad, not bad at all. 
Okay. And then we are just gonna, I'm go, gonna go ahead and denote the fact that we are kind of taking a cut here. So we've got the these forces here. Uh, so if we were to take a cut at this point uh, K here, 1.5 meters, uh, let's just 1.5 meters, which means that uh, C is, uh, let's see, how far was C? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Really... How far is it? Oh, yeah, C was uh, 2.8 meters. Uh, 2.8 meters from there to there because it was halfway there. So uh, 2.8 meters minus 1.5 means that this is 1.3 meters. It's not millimeters. Why did I do that? And then. Uh, that just means that's in it from here to here is an additional 1.2 meters. 1.2 meters. Okay, so if, if we want to figure out what the equilibrium can do, what, what the internal loading of this bar is, uh, then essentially what we need to do is just need to take a cut and figure out. Uh, what sort of loading we need to add to that cutoff section in order to keep it in equilibrium. So if we have that, well, we know that there's not going to be any axial force because there's no force going this way. So I'm not too worried about that. We know there's going to be shear force. Uh, so we know that there needs to be a shear force. It's going to need to be pushing this side upwards. And the amount that it needs to be pushing that side upwards is uh, that uh, 1,200 newtons. And then the problem is if we just cut this thing and had a force there and a force there, well, then it would be spinning, spinning out of control uncontrollably. I suppose that's a bit redundant. Uh, yes, yeah, spinning out of control. Uh, so in order to counteract that, uh, what we need is we need a moment. Uh, so again, um, I uh, uh, in or in order to have that occur, we're going to have to cause we're going to have a moment that. Uh, the tendency that this thing has is to rotate this way, so we're going to have to have a moment that uh, is applied there. I'm going to call it MK because we're, they define K as that point. Uh, and then the magnitude of MK is going to have to be equal to it's a, enough to counteract this force couple here. So that force couple is 1200 newtons times 1.5 meters, which I believe is 1,800, yeah, 1,800 uh, newton meters. Or 1.8 kilonewton meters, either way it works. So that's that's the loading situation there, and uh, uh, we'll talk a bit more about the uh, sign convention for that uh, shortly. Uh, but uh, I would uh, I would define uh, this here as a negative moment. And the 
uh, shear. Uh, likewise, it was going to be a negative internal shear. Oh, well, uh, uh, I'll, I'll have a separate video for kind of the details on the sign conventions and talks about how to how to draw how to draw those diagrams. So uh, we got we got that. Uh, so we got our we got our internal load in terms of shear. Now we got our internal load in terms of moment. So the other point that they asked us for is here at J. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw J, uh, and then I'm going to kind of lay it flat and put uh, the uh, kind of ro rotate the axes and uh, the the point of reference we're looking at it in. Uh, so first off, uh, let's figure out what this angle is before we do that. Uh, so I've got this angle here. Uh, so inverse tan of, uh, what are we looking for here? 5.4 divided by 4.8. And that is... 48.4 degrees. So uh, let, let's let's just first re recreate what we have to begin with. So we've got this C. Oh, sorry, we've got, we got this member here. Uh, it's got uh, A, C, and F are the points that have, have reaction forces. Uh, so A uh, a has a y component, uh, the x component is zero, so a y is equal to um, uh, a, a y is equal to negative 1800 newtons, so uh, that one's actually pushing upwards uh, 1800 newtons. And then we have the CY. Uh, so again, CY is based upon uh, so uh, C CY has on the vertical, uh, sorry, the horizontal bar, it has a positive uh, 360, sorry, 3600 uh, Newton force, which means that on this bar, we got the exact opposite. And then at uh, blah blah blah, uh, we've also got the reaction force at uh, G. So GY we already we already, we already determined was eighteen hundred uh, kil uh, eighteen hundred newton force pushing like this. Yep. Not kilonewtons, just newtons. 1800 newton force. Okay, so though that is our free body diagram for that, because again, the x components of all these are zero, uh, and that's that looks fine. You know that is the forces the forces balance out, uh, and the moments do as well. If we take a moment about here. Uh, you know, this one has a positive moment, this one has a negative moment. They've got equal magnitude and they've also got equal uh, uh, displace, uh, e equal offset. So we're going to have equal and opposite moments generated by those two forces, which means that this thing's in equilibrium as it is. But they were asking about the uh, internal loading. So uh, again, internal loading, we do that in terms of taking a cross section. So when we take a cross section, we, you know, we actually cut it across the face of it. We don't, we don't, we don't, we, we, we don't do slants like that. I mean, you can do slants like that, but it doesn't, it doesn't really tell us the type of information we're looking for. So we, we what we want to do is we want to take a cut like that and uh, figure out what sort of 
axial shear and bending moment forces arise as a result of that. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to kind of uh, reorient ourselves. So if we just kind of uh, rotate our frame of reference such that we're looking at this thing laying down and then And we've got 1800, kilonewton, 1800 newtons going this way. We've got 3600 newtons going this way. And we've got 1800 newtons going that way. So we're going to want to break those up into their components. Uh, so basically, you need to go have a look at what this angle here is. I went ahead and calculated it already. It's 48.4 uh, uh, degrees. So that means that when we rotate this thing down like this, uh, we rotate this, that means that this thing ends up rotating like that. 48.4 degrees is going to be that uh, that reference there. Uh, so we can go ahead and basically solve, uh, replace these forces with equivalent forces that are uh, acting axially and, and shear forces. So again, just based upon the uh, trigonometry that we have here, if this is for, if this is forty eight degrees, uh, then the uh, shear force here that's going to be eighteen hundred cos forty eight point eight. So that'll be 11.95 newtons. And the uh, the uh, axial portion there, that's going to be uh, 1800 times sine 48.8. So that gives us 1346 uh, newtons. So that's what we have on that end. Uh, on this end, we've got the same thing. Oh, I don't want to erase the bar. So we've got the same thing, pushing in the same direction, even. All right. And Then going ahead and replacing this one here, uh, we knew that the uh, initial magnitude of uh, C there was double the magnitude of the, the other two forces. So the resultant, uh, sorry, the magnitude was double, uh, obviously acting in the opposite direction. Uh, so we're going to end up with 1195 times 2 going downwards here. Uh, so that'll be 2390. And then we're going to have a axial force here. Uh, so that'll be 1346 times 2, 2692. Nine, two. Uh, that, that's the free body diagram of this bar, bar here, kind of when we rotate our frame of reference. So the, the, this will let us uh, kind of figure out uh, how the internal forces vary along the length of the uh, member in question. So I'm going to, since I did the rotating down this way, I'm going to I'm going to redefine an axis coordinate system 
like this. So I'm going to call this x prime, and this will be y prime. So yeah, it's uh, starting at this end, moving down towards this end. So uh, it's not too hard to have a look at the uh, axial force uh, diagram. So starting at this end, immediately, you know, at, at various points that so we could take a slice along this way, uh, the, that point will be under tension. Uh, so we could just uh, we could just draw a quick uh, diagram here. So that causes a tensile load until we get to this point here where it drops, and from here on it's going to be under compression. So under tension between here and here, under compression from here and here. So positive 1346 and then a negative 1346 newtons. That'll be N of X prime. And this one will just be X prime. So that, that's how it varies. Um, the question actually asked for at J. Uh, so uh, at at J, it's between you know between A and C. Uh, so J J is looking right about here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that in green. J is looking at, at about there. It, it it is actually halfway between A A and C. Uh, so directly directly at that halfway point. So the internal axial load at J is uh, 1346 newtons. For the shear force, uh, again, uh, we can draw a quick diagram of how it varies across the length. So it's being pushed up right there, which means that it causes an internal positive shear load. And that continues until we get across to this point. Then it drops down until we get to this point. So that is going to be, that's going to have a similar shape. Except the value here is eleven ninety five. Now, one thing I would like to point out is that unlike tension, uh, the shear load, the 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 sign of the shear load, that's a matter of convention and some people use different sign conventions for that uh, this uh, this is this is the one that uh, I, I'll be using for this course it's the one that most textbooks use it's the one I think kind of makes a bit more sense but so basically uh, uh, it, it's the one that allows for when you have your free body diagram forces applied to the object cause increases in the uh, sorry upward forces cause increases in the uh, shear force diagram when you move from left to left to right now again uh, that's rather arbitrary uh, you could have an increase when moving from right to left either and you know it'd make just as much sense uh, but that's you know that's the way it goes so uh, we're picking that. Uh, we'll go with that. So this, so obviously the uh, shear, the shear load at point J, which is halfway between uh, halfway between here and here, 
is going to be 11.95 newtons. And then we got the moment diagram. So the moment diagram, the moment diagram is going to be not quite, well, I haven't taught you guys yet how to do that directly from the from the graphs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'll, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just take a section cut here first. So we'll, we'll take we'll take a section cut here, uh, and I'll redraw that uh, free body diagram. Okay, so shear load. And then we have a positive tensile load. And so obviously at the, yeah, uh, in order to maintain our equilibrium, and pushing down there. So again, I think you might see why the shear is a bit arbitrary. You know, whether or not positive is pushing up on the face itself or pushing up on the body uh, where you took the cut. Uh, so pushing up here causes an increase in the shear load, but that actually results in that face being pushed down. Whereas alternatively, you could look at it as that face that's being cut is because it's being pushed, it is being pushed down by this face. That means that this face is imposing a positive uh, a, a force in this direction. So, well, you know, the shear, the shear conventions are a bit arbitrary, um, but uh, anyways. So we got we got these two forces here. Sorry, these these two pairs of forces. Uh, but the problem is obviously if we just leave this like it is, then this is causing a moment. This is causing a moment. Those two act together and uh, would cause this thing to spin out of control, eventually destroying the universe. So instead. Uh, what ends up happening is we have an internal force, sorry, an internal moment that is generated in order to counteract that. So that moment at J is going to be counteracting that. And so the magnitude of that moment, uh, so this was 1.2 meters from here to here. So the magnitude of that moment just needs is is the same as that force coupled there. So we've got the uh, eleven ninety five times one point two sorry eleven ninety five newtons. I know I harp on you guys for using your units in your calculation, so I definitely should do so too. Oh, oh what happened there? There we go. And what's that end up being? That ends up being 1434 Newton meters. So again, I would like to point out that this value scales up based upon how large this thing is. So if we took a cut right here, it would be a lot smaller. Bit bigger, bit bigger than that, and it'd start increasing until it got to this point. And then th this is kind of the point at which it would be at its maximum. And then, kind of, once you go past that point, what happens is we end up with 
this and that, and kind of as you get further and further out, uh, the contribution from this force is enough to counteract the contribution from this force. So as you get further out, because it's larger, uh, so as you get further further and further out, uh, you, you start dropping in the uh, uh, in the moment instead of increasing. So the magnitude of that uh, at point J is uh, is here. So that's our that's our internal that's our internal forces right there. All 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 three of them that we're worried about. And of course, we're just assuming there's no torque. It's a two D structure. So like I said, uh, this thing increases until you hit the midpoint and then it starts decreasing again. So uh, between between here and here it does increase linearly until you hit the, hit the midpoint and then it decreases linearly again. So that, is, that would be how you go about kind of solving it for a particular point uh, and we'll discuss later in a little bit about how to uh, some some tricks to avoid having to do that for all points that you might be concerned about.